The late Gwen Ifill, a beloved reporter who anchored the PBS Evening News, once said, we cannot expect the world to get better by itself. We have to create something. We can leave the next generation. Gwen died four years ago, and through her defense of press freedom, she has left us a legacy which we can carry forward. Gwen was a supporter and longtime board member of the Committee to Protect Journalists, which has named an award in her honor. The Gwen Eiffel Award is given every year for extraordinary and sustained achievement in the cause of press freedom. This evening's award is presented to a woman who exemplifies the tireless struggle for press freedom and justice. And she's not only something every journalist needs, which is a great lawyer, but she's also a defender of the international laws that make free expression possible. Tonight, we honor her work to ensure that governments and tyrants are made accountable for their unprecedented attacks on press freedom. It's my great honor to announce Amal Clooney as the 2020 recipient of the Gwen Eiffel Award. Amal brings her skill as an advocate and her expertise in international human rights law to help free journalists who are unjustly imprisoned and to protect those who face such imprisonment. We're facing a free speech crisis in the world today and it's extremely concerning. Record numbers of journalists are being abused across the world through vilification, threats, surveillance, imprisonment, even murder. She has defended journalists around the world and helped win their freedom. Among them, Mohammed Fahmy, an Al Jazeera journalist, investigative reporter Khadija Ismailova, jailed in Azerbaijan, and in Myanmar, Reuters journalists Wa Long and Cha So U. Amal has represented clients before courts such as the International Criminal Court and the European Court of Human Rights. Her organization, the Clooney Foundation for Justice, monitors press freedom violations and provides free legal representation for those in greatest need. It is time to make justice your priority so that history can record what happened, so that we can stop it from happening again. I am so honored to be able to, to call the winner of the 2020 Gwen Ifill Press Freedom Award, not only a dear friend, but somebody who has enabled us here in Rappler in the Philippines to actually do our work and someone who I hope will continue doing that work so that we stay out of jail. Um, we are halfway around the world from each other, but please join us in this conversation with Amal Clooney. Amal, it is so good to see you. Hello, Maria. It's so good to see you as well. I wish we could be in the same room, but this will have to do for now. Thank you, CPJ, for giving me the chance to ask her questions <laughs> instead of her grilling me. To prepare for this, I looked at everything you did in your life and, you know, very, very <laughs> oh, impressive Oxford University, NYU Law, a professor at Columbia Law School. Uh, but the crucial question, why do you do what you do? I think one of the reasons I do it is uh, because I know how lucky I am. I, you know, I was born in Lebanon uh, at a time when that country was going through a civil war and I was lucky enough, my family was able to leave the country and we moved to the UK as refugees and from there anything was possible. Uh, but I think another part of it though is frankly um, anger. I think anger drives a lot of what I do because um, when I read about what's happening in many places in the world, I just feel a sense of outrage uh, that those in power are abusing their power. Today in 2020, I see in far too many places the those who are committing human rights abuses are free and those who are reporting on them are imprisoned. And I will continue to focus on trying to tackle both <laughs> problems. Um, you know, uh, and I thank you for being so determined to continue the work that you do. No, no I mean, thank you for that. Uh, and, it, and we are so much better because you do what you do, right? But when you're facing such seemingly hopeless cases, where does Amal, where does hope come from for you? <laughs> 
Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I would ask you the same question. I, it, it never occurs to me to do otherwise. Um, I suppose it's more, um, it, it, it's the, that's the default. And I think actually the worse the situation gets, you know, you asked me why I had to focus on journalists. I didn't start my career thinking I'm going to focus on cases involving journalists. I, I decided to focus my career on cases involving human rights. And you can't defend human rights if journalists can't do their work. You can't defend democracy if you don't have a thriving and independent media. But the more I see autocratic regimes becoming determined to silence those who disagree with them, to silence those who expose the truth or corruption or, or things that embarrass them, the more determined we have to be. You know, they're becoming more creative in their methods. Um, and so we need to become um, more savvy in our response. And so I think journalists have a part to play. Lawyers have a part to play. Yeah. Senators have a part to play. My name means hope. So I'm, I am destined to be an optimist. <laughs> So Amal, tonight you are getting uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists, their Gwen Eiffel Press Freedom Award. What does this mean to you? Well, I feel so honored um, to get this award. The Committee to Protect Journalists does incredible work. Uh, I couldn't do my work without them. I rely on their data. I, you know, I, I brainstorm with them and they are um, really professional and, and really devoted. And so, you know, I think we both feel very strongly that uh, journalism is the lifeblood of democracy and that this is, you know, something we have to continue to fight for. Uh, I know how powerful a defender you are and we in Rappler are just so lucky to have you on our side. Your taking my case helps give me the courage to do what we're doing to continue standing up to power. Cause I know that, you know, God forbid if something happens and I tell you this all the time, I know you're there. What kind of pressure does that put on you? Well, I, I do feel pressure um, when I work on cases like yours. Um, and I, sh you know, to some degree, your case does keep me up at night. And, and so it should, because you might be the one in the dock, but it's actually democracy that's on trial. If, if you can be taken away and handcuffed and silenced, then every other journalist in the country knows what they need to do to stay safe. It's not a fair contest. You know, you have the truth on your side, but um, your uh, foe is the most powerful person in the country. <laughs> and the, you know, the other side of this case is the government that controls the police and controls the army and controls the prosecutors and potentially controls the courts. So I think we are asking a lot of journalists. Um, you know, I think you're incredibly courageous, but you shouldn't need to be this courageous. It's too much to ask. It's too much pressure on people like you. And I think that's why the system has to change. Most people may not realize your mom was, uh, is a, a journalist, right? Uh, how has this affected you? What has she done? How has her work affected you? Well, I mean, I definitely um, watched her admiringly. Uh, you know, she was a journalist initially in Lebanon and then um, a foreign correspondent based in the UK. But I grew up sort of watching her rushing to finish her, her columns. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it's in the family. My husband's father is also a veteran journalist and it's definitely something close to both of our hearts. Um, it's, it's in our families and, and it means that it's, uh, it's difficult to get a word in edgeways at our family dinner tables. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amal Clooney, Amal Hope, and, you know, really a fuel for courage for us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much. Maria, thank you. And it was a pleasure.